Today, 22-year-old Kaja Vikhoff Lee of Norway sustained a horrific crash during a Super G event taking place in Italy. I wanted to go over some of her injuries today in more detail. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, I break down injuries athletes have so that average fans can better understand what's going on. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on my latest content. For now, let's get back to looking at the injury. So Kaja's right here, and if we follow, so she's lost her footing, coming in, and unfortunately hits the safety barriers or the safety gates here. And it's really this left leg that is sitting in, an air, sitting in a way which is not anatomically correct. So we're worried about an injury in that leg. The other thing, if, if any of you have watched this video with audio, Kaja is screaming quite a lot. And I mean, they're quite, they're quite gruesome screams. And that tells you that this level of impact and what she's experiencing is, is pretty severe. There is something going on. There's likely something broken and multiple other injuries we need to consider. Now let's break this injury down kind of more in, in a slow motion format. So unfortunately, she lost her footing here. We're gonna follow her left leg in particular. So right knee here, left leg here. Seems like things are all right. And so it's actually here where I start to become worried about her left lower leg. Many people thought that the original break happened in the safety gates. But if you look here, this is an unnatural bend for your lower tibia. Your tibia and your fibula, which are your two lower leg bones should be straight. So let's follow this, continue following it. So I'm worried that there's a bend here. And if we follow her, and unfortunately, this, this bend becomes exacerbated, right? So high forces, she falls, this boot is solid. So it's not gonna let any bend happen at the ankle. So unfortunately, if she's falling over that boot, it's gonna cause a break at this level. And this is her left leg right around here. So this one here is gonna look weird, but it's just because of the actual design on her leg. There isn't any significant bending that you'll note on the right side, okay? But on the left, you'll just take a look and you'll see that unfortunately this has been, it's, it's being spun at the same time just because of her trajectory and the fact that she's got a long anchor of the ski that's controlling where her foot will be. So her body's moving one way, but the ski is keeping her foot the other way. And then she ends up unfortunately in the net here with the left leg being suspended. And this is where you'll see that there is definitely an unnatural rotation of this leg. So as a doctor on the field covering an event like this, I mean, super G ski races, they reach speeds up to 120 kilometers per hour. So a fall on skis is essentially being ejected out of a car, for example, when you're having a motor vehicle collision on the highway. So we're worried about high levels of trauma. So we enact something called our ATLS protocol. It's traumatic services protocol. It's essentially kind of RCPR, but for big traumas. And essentially we come in, we want to one, stabilize the C-spine because any sort of C-spine issue can cause acute paralysis. So you're not going to want to move the C-spine. Next, check for airway and breathing. And then last is also check for circulation. So make sure that they're with it. They can talk to you. There's good blood flow. You can get a nice heart rate because those things are going to hurt and kill the athlete right away. After that, that's when we do a secondary survey. So then we talk to them, we try to get a, a little bit of an overview of their cognitive status, because if she was not with it and lost consciousness, I'd be a lot more worried because I'm worried about brain bleeds and issues in the head, for example. And then as we go down, we do a secondary survey. So we go down the body. We want to make sure that there's kind of look for any breaks and abnormalities. And in her case, in Kasia's case, we will see that her left leg was, you know, contorted in an unanatomical way. So we're worried about a break. And in that case, if we can stabilize it, we stabilize the fracture. As you can see, she's put on a, a backboard here, so she's nice and stable. They likely stabilized her C-spine, and then they acutely took her to hospital. Now, reports do state that she did have a fracture of her lower left leg, as well as a lot of knee swelling, although they don't know what's going on in terms of the knee swelling as well. This is your tibia. This is your fibula. So this is the outside aspect of your leg. And this is where we saw that acute bending of the leg. So I'm pretty concern that she's gonna have a compound fracture. What does that mean? Essentially a fracture of both of the tibia and the fibula. Likely she's gonna need these repaired with rods and screws, depending on what the surgeon finds intraoperatively. Now, unfortunately, the more dangerous aspect to this injury is the injury to the surrounding neurovascular structures. So as you can see here, there are arteries in red, veins in blue, and nerves in, in, in yellow. And if someone has a pretty significant fracture, for example, so this breaks, you can only imagine that these breaking bones, if they break, they can actually hit surrounding neurovascular structures and cause damage to arteries, veins, and nerves. 
And this will dictate how long it's going to take her to recover and whether or not she's going to have long lasting nerve damage, for example, if certain nerves were impacted. Now, the other thing that they noticed was that the left knee was quite swollen. Although news reports said that they didn't have time to really address that yet because she's going to need surgery on the fracture, which is more of an immediate issue. Now, when it comes to knee swelling, there are a multitude of things that can cause knee swelling, but acute knee swelling is really caused by a few main things. Intraarticular ligament tears or ruptures. So that's your ACL and your PCL. Intraarticular fractures, so fractures inside your knee joint and acute dislocations of things like your patella, which is your kneecap. So those are the big ones that will cause acute knee swelling. So here I have a left lower leg and we're looking at the upper part of the knee here. So I've taken off the femur, but essentially this is looking at the knee joint half open. And the things that we're worried about, especially in skiers uh, who have fallen much like Kaja and twisted their leg and twisted their knees in abnormal ways, are worrisome issues at kind of the ACL and PCL. So you have your MCL ligament here, your medial collateral, you have your lateral collateral ligament here, and that stabilizes the knee from inside and outside angulation forces. And then you have your ACL here, so the big one that people talk about, and, and one that commonly will go in skiers, as well as your PCL ligament. And that ACL and PCL help stabilize the knee from translating forward and backward. Now it's these two ligaments I would be most worried about if she has a lot of swelling in the knee, especially with that, with that crash. To be honest, when I see a high energy crash like that, I am worried about a multi-ligamentous injury to the knee. The other thing that you have to be concerned of is something called the meniscus, which is a little cartilage ring structure here and here, medial and lateral, that allow that femur to sit there and rotate nicely on the surface of the tibia. Now in her case, if she has any injury to the ACL or PCL, these are likely gonna be impacted as well and may need to be addressed. Now this is important because when it comes to kind of return to sport and return to play, in skiers, an unstable knee is actually more serious than an acute fracture that then heals later on. So for example, if she gets operated on the lower fracture and nothing else was damaged, so the nerves, artery, and veins were normal, after about kind of a good three to six months of rehabilitation, you can likely put good load on it and get back to playing. Now the issue is gonna be, especially when it comes to Kaja's return, what is gonna go on in the knee? Because the problem is if she becomes ACL deficient or needs an ACL repair, she has a very unstable knee. And there's also that mental, uh, mental roadblock once athletes have them repaired, whether or not they can trust the knee. This will likely keep her out for longer and could keep her out for up to a year. And it may be the defining feature of whether or not she'll be able to return back to her sport. A lot of people have been talking about why did her skis not disengage? As most of you, if any of you were skiers, you'll know if you fall, your skis come off. Well, the problem is with professional skiers, they turn up something called a DIN setting to pretty much as high as it can go. What that is, is it's the release mechanism of the ski. So I'm gonna put up a, a ski boot here as well as where you can toggle it. And essentially the higher the DIN setting, the stronger the binding binds to the actual boot. Theirs are so high that it's pretty much solidly <laughs> stuck on the boot. And the reason why it is that way is because at traveling at speeds of 100 kilometers per hour, having that boot completely, or that ski, undo itself on a bump, for example, can be disastrous. And because of that, the ski stayed on her and during her fall, twisted that left leg that much more. So reports state that Kaja is getting surgery on the left lower leg for her fracture. And we will get some additional information about her right knee once they have time to investigate it further. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. For now, that's all.